Well, good morning. I want to welcome you as we gather for worship. This is All Saints Day observed. All Saints Day is actually November 1st, but it is so important that we observe it on the weekend following. And today we begin with a portion of a hymn that we sing for All Saints Day. It's called For All the Saints. And that is, what is the hymn? 677. Now, if you'll take a look at that hymn, hymn number 677, it is rather long. So we will begin at the now by singing verses 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then at the last hymn, we sing verses 6, 7, and 8. So we do sing the entire hymn. We just split it up a little bit. And it is a tough hymn because it is so long. That's my purpose for splitting it so we don't get so winded on it. Beautiful hymn, though. Anyway, with that in mind, let us begin with the opening hymn, 677, verses 1 through 5.
please open to our worship on page 203 and let us rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who may heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our worthy unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, your, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Revelation 
chapter 7, lines 9 through 17. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressing me says, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes? And from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they have, are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he sits on the throne, shelter, will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the spring of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Our epistle reading is from 1 John chapter 3. Lines 1 through 3. See what kind of love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it does not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. the fifth chapter. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
And blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. We join in professing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 207. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I would like to invite the children to come forward for an object lesson. Thanks for coming up. Look what I found. You know what this is? Kind of, they call it a, they call it a disco ball. But do you know what disco is? I don't think so. What? It's just a kind of music. It goes way back and to me, it's kind of funny. But these things are pretty cool because you can see much bigger ones in reception places. Like if you go to a wedding reception, sometimes they might have one of these uh, hanging up there in the middle of the place and there's lights shining on them. And you know what's really neat? I turn off these lights because watch, watch this. Look at the floor. Sometimes you can see the reflection of this. And, and the big ones with the really bright lights on them, it really changes the atmosphere of the whole place. Because they see the lights. Oh, look at this. See that? And people seem to be happy when they see stuff like that. Oh, wow, look at that. You know, if you, if you had one of these, you could hang it up in your bedroom and, and put lights on it and, and let it spin. You know, that's, that's a task that your, your parents need to do, right? If you had one of these, you know. But these are so cool because it, it can be something that changes the atmosphere. You know, in heaven, we don't have stuff like this, but we have something better. You know what brings the light in heaven for, to everyone? It's Jesus. Jesus is that central focus. He is the one who made us and redeemed us, who loves us with an everlasting love. He is God in human form, and he ascended into heaven uh, to be in the power, uh, uh, position of power and might and everything. But he's the one who loves us so much. And he's the one who makes heaven so special for us. He's like that light, and just being in his presence is like, wow, this is so cool. So when you look at something like this, just remember the, the main thing in heaven is to be with our Savior and to be awed and, and just blown away by, by the light of our Savior. 
and by his presence. Okay. I want to thank you for coming up. Now, you are all with one family, right? You're all together. You know what? I, you take this song. Oh, you got your hands full. You want to carry it back? Be careful because those things, you put your fingers right inside because you don't want to, you know, hurt that or make that fall apart. I got one for each of you, too. Um, and it's really not a toy, but it's something that can remind you of Jesus, okay? And those little mirrors that are on it can fall off if you're not careful. Thank you so much. You can go back to your seats. And the hymn of the day is a beautiful hymn based upon the gospel for today. Peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The words of our text are recorded in Revelation chapter 7, beginning at verse 13. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So far the text. Well, there's a Sunday school teacher teaching children on All Saints Day. And the teacher said to, to the class, what do you have to do to be a saint? And one little child handheld, I know, I know, I know. The teacher said, oh, what's the answer? You have to die. <laughs> yeah, that's what some people think. You don't have to die to be a saint. St. Paul wrote letters to a number of churches. To the church in Corinth, Ephesus, Philippi, Colossae, Colossians. And he addressed them to the saints. The Greek word is hagios, saints. 
They are saints in the Lord because of their faith. They're saints in the Lord because they have been baptized into Christ. They have been given Christ's righteousness. And even on this side of heaven, they can be called a saint, and you can too. But there's more to it because we're not just saints, we're also sinners. On this side of heaven, we, we have that sinful nature tagging along with us. We can't get rid of it. And when we really look into our hearts and our minds, we realize that we are sinners. But it's nice to know that we are saints in God's family, as St. John wrote in his first epistle that Candace read earlier, that we are the children of God. Yeah, we don't always live like his children, but we are. In Revelation, John reminds us how the people before the throne in heaven are the ones who came out of great tribulation. And that describes what we're in now, right now. We're, we're dealing with tribulation. Life is not easy. Sometimes the struggle that we have in life is to struggle with ourselves. And we see ourselves doing things that we, we really regret or wish we didn't do. That's a struggle we have. Sometimes in life we struggle with other things. If you don't think your life is struggling too much, well, just wait until Tuesday. Hmm. Wait for the results. And maybe when you get the results, no matter what political party you want, you might be struggling. That's the world in which we live. It's a struggle. It's a tribulation. Illness has a way of bringing that into our lives, too. Bad news that we experience. All kinds of things. And this is what we go through. King David once described it in Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah, that's something we experience. Tribulation. The saints go through tribulation. But in the end, we get to be with Christ in heaven. You know, when I graduated from high school, you know, I don't remember a lot about those days, but one point I do remember. You know, they, they had to instruct us. We had rehearsals, and, and the people in charge would tell us when to sit, when to stand, how to walk up on the stage, what to say, what not to say. They had a very specific on what we could and could not do. They wanted us to behave in a certain way, to be a certain way in our lives for graduation, get up on that stage and get back to our seats. And so everybody would be impressed. So graduation day came and everything was going smoothly until this one young woman graduating went up on stage. She got up the steps of the stage, walked across the stage, received her diploma, took one step, and she stopped. You weren't supposed to stop. And she held up her diploma really high and yelled out in a loud voice, Look, Ma, I made it! And I was thinking, oh, she's in trouble. What can they do? She graduated. That's what I remember about graduate. Isn't that sad? I think that her mother and, and this woman, the young woman, had so many conversations about her possible inability to graduate. I mean, they probably spent long nights talking about, are your grades good enough to get you in? And maybe she doubted it too. But what about the saints in heaven? Do you think they were worried and maybe wondered whether or not they'd get there? No. They knew. They knew they were going to heaven. They were baptized into Christ. They had faith in Jesus. They knew he died for their sins, that he paid for them all. They knew that the Holy Spirit was dwelling within them. They knew that Jesus rose again for their justification, that they, in God's sight, they were cleansed, they were forgiven, they were in Christ. 
And when they found themselves before the throne in heaven, they were rejoicing. And that's what they do in heaven. Some people like to say that maybe their mother's looking down at them, or their dad is looking down at them. Oh, these are nice sayings that people like to you know, mention, but you know, if you were in heaven, would you be looking down at your kids? I mean, it's a parent. What do they do? I know my mother, she'd look at me and she'd tell me everything wrong with me sometimes. Oh, she loved me. But they know correction. Well, she's not doing that now. She's with the Lord. She has better things to look at. She's got Christ, our Savior, God in human form, who died for her, who loved her with an everlasting love, who rose again for her. And there he is, the light of the world. Surrounded by holy angels. And that's a beautiful thing to know. Because God has prepared a place for us so beautiful and so wonderful. It's something that can give us hope. Because we live too often with letdowns in life. That's tribulation. But as St. John sees in his chapter of Revelation that they've gone through the great tribulation and are now with Christ. And how do we know they're there? Look at the robes they're wearing. They're white robes. Robes of Christ's righteousness that he has given to each of us. They're not there because of their own works. They're not there because of some special thing they did. No, they do special things because they belong to Christ. And they're with God personally in heaven, beholding Jesus, surrounded by even loved ones. That's the one thing. I can't wait to meet some of the, my family again. And I also look forward to meeting people I never saw personally, people who are recorded in the Bible. That's a good thing. But the most wonderful thing is on All Saints Day, we remember all the saints living and departing. And as we worship today, we have a section that reminds us in our worship, the divine worship, in this moment we do join the saints in heaven as we worship our Lord Jesus in his most precious name. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Before I have the prayer announcements, I will need a couple of volunteers to gather the offerings after we have the prayers. The altar flowers are given in honor of Joe and Diane Malone's wedding anniversary. And the eternal light has lit in memory of Mary Claire and George by Deborah Morrow. And also in our prayers, we continue to pray for those who we've been asked to keep in prayer for Kathy and Amy and Kim, Arlene and Sarah, Daryl, Sally and Paul, Ron and Carol, and George Vesicchio, Linda Ruland, who is now under hospice care, Bill, Pete Kennedy, Esther, Claire Chamberlain, Janice, and Donna. We also pray for Maria Stockman and Maxine Lila, who is at home, both receiving hospice care in their house homes. And also at the death of Hans Broderson, the father of Michelle Brogy, he passed away earlier this week. We pray for Dawn for a return to good health, for Tom healing from lung issues. And we also welcome Buddy Negrini into the fellowship of our congregation. Uh, Buddy is back there and uh, so happy to have you with us. Let us rise as we continue in prayer. Gracious, gratefully we pray for the church at large and for the fellowship we enjoy as God's holy people remembering the saints in other places around the world who share in our faith and hope and love and joy. 
Lord, in your mercy. And confidently we make our petitions for the sick, the sorrowing, those who mourn, and all who this day are in need of our prayers. Grant that their petitions, good shepherd, be answered according to your gracious will, and that they be supported by this fellowship of saints. Help us to cherish the company of all of God's people, and seek to bring care in Christ to all with cheerful hearts. Lord, in your mercy. And humbly we ask your blessing upon our nation, its leaders, and all who work for the security of our communities. Grant that we always cherish the freedoms we enjoy and be strengthened by your power to, main, to maintain the public good and promote peace and harmony. Lord, in your mercy. Your Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And please share the peace of the Lord with those who are near you. And peace of the Lord be with you. And after we've done that, if the ushers could please come forward to gather the offerings. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. 
For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. By faith, the saints of old held fast to your promise of things hoped for, though not yet seen, leaving an example and encouragement for us who walk now by faith and not by sight. Grant that we may faithfully eat and drink of this holy supper of your Son's body and blood, and in the union of his mystical body, the Church, be joined in unending praise with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Moses, Elijah, and all the faithful prophets, the blessed apostles and evangelists, the holy martyrs, and all the saints in glory who fought the good fight of faith before us. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
May this true body and blood of your Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. God's peace is with you. Go in his peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Please rise for the canticle. Thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore that you, of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and your fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. We conclude by singing stanzas or verses 6, 7, and 8 of hymn number 677 for all the saints.
received an email from the president of our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, uh, Matt Harrison, and it's a, a good email, lengthy-wise, but uh, the gist of it is he wants pastors to tell their people to do one thing this week, vote, okay? That's what he says, vote. Um, we do not promote any specific party, but he does say vote, so may God bless your vote. Okay, Joe. Anybody's welcome.